Welcome back to Foundry. My name is Nilos and I will be your guide on this second look at Foundry. So I did a first look video. Check that out first. If you haven't watched it, it gives an idea about what this game is. And uh, I will now in this episode continue with where we left off. And it's not just for, for me just because I want to play more. There are actually three good reasons why I want to come back to this game and show some more of it. Uh, the first reason is, of course, well, I enjoy it. The second reason is you enjoyed it as well. Quite a good feedback on YouTube. And thirdly, I don't think I really gave it its um, its proper treatment because what I showed in my first look was basically a very two-dimensional look, what you can see here, this kind of, of build where we we built at a on a platform and we built things and and people have been saying well it looks like basically satisfactory and factorio but also sort of in in a bit of a, in a minecraft world and uh, yeah i think that's true but i was also kind of missing something that was unique to this game and oh boy have i found it so the thing is like this game really opens up to some unique tech at the second tier and uh, that's where we kind of left off at my first look. So the second look will really get into some of the cool things that are very unique compared to um, any of the other games that we've been uh, we've been looking at. And certainly doesn't feel at all like Satisfactory or Factorio. So hope you want to join me for that ride and uh, take a look at a second look at Foundry and what uh, what it has to offer in terms of really unique gameplay. So if you enjoy these uh, kind of videos and these. Uh, first look then uh, you can consider subscribing to keep up with more stuff coming in on the channel and of course if you like it hit the like button so that uh, more people will find this video as well the first thing we uh, we're working on is just getting some more science we need science pack 2 and those require building blocks and uh, conveyors in order to produce so we are using our bus design to get those get those sorted uh, we will also be needing to expand our smelting array and uh, just to make sure that we get twice as many xenoferrite plates, iron plates. And uh, those will also be coming in handy because we need to scale up our base and those are just some of the first things that I want to get done while we're just doing the intro here. We're also upgrading the belts so that they run even faster so that we can actually keep up with capacity. At this point we're now starting ready to get into some of the more new stuff with our science operational. And we now have the science operational and we're just letting the new science pack 2 flow in and we are going to get our space elevator or space elevator research completed immediately. Just having a look at our mining has also been scaled up of course in order to support the yellow belts and we are then uh, coming in here yeah you can see that lots of drones we can also upgrade the drones later on when we get to some more research here's an interesting thing it's actually the feeding rate that is dictating the research there's no processing uh, time inside the actual facility and then we get the elevator done we will then start working on the next part the freight elevator which will be done quickly as well and then after the freight elevator, we can do the underground mining, which is what we really want to get to. We also have this geological scanner, which is kind of the next uh, big step for, for us here. So those are the really the new tech that I didn't see in the first episode, but is something that is definitely going to be uh, interesting to get into. And that will be the focus of this episode, figuring out how those elevators and automatic underground mining trains work. Oh, yeah. So we'll go over and find a nice open space for us to build our space elevator. No, it's not a space elevator. It's quite the opposite of a space elevator, actually. It's it's going to go down. First thing we want to do is scan because uh, there are underground resources. And this geological scanner, in its very rudimentary uh, look and feel, that displays different types of materials at different heights down here. So we're looking for the red stuff. That's the ignium rock. Ignium rock is what we need for the next part of... Uh, uh, for the next tech to get up to the something steel, stelium, xeno steel. And uh, that means if we uh, can go down to level 90, we are currently at height 136. So we need to get all the way down to 90 to get the, to get it. And that's, uh, that's pretty far down. So what we, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to make an elevator instead. That looks like this. And that's a completely new building. Basically it can go up. There's uh, some information about this in the, Tutorial, that's really nice, but we don't need a tutorial. We have uh, me trying to explain what it actually does. So when you go in here, you, it only has like one location that's uh, called new. We'll change it and that will be our home it, at height 136. 
Then we'll add a new station and we'll do this as a viewpoint and we'll get that sort of 10 levels higher up and then see when we click confirm, then it will automatically start building. You can hear the sound of it and it'll automatically start building up and down. Now there's something a bit magical about it, the fact that it doesn't require power and stuff like that, but who cares? It's pretty cool that it works like this. And right when we get up, we can now go to the new location called view. You can only have four characters, so you gotta be very inventive about what you're gonna call each, <laughs> each level. And that means we can now go up and then get a nice view of our base. And it's this is actually gonna be super handy. It also means that it's not make, gonna make it much easier to make new levels because we can just always elevate our way up. Uh, let's try again, get up here, get up to our view location. Now we're just trying to build a little view and we're coming in. I really like this elevator, this uh, changes a lot. It also goes down, obviously, uh, that's uh, kind of has to go both up and down. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be setting some railings here. This is also just a nice little thing to, to illustrate that what you can do here. Uh, we can make the railings and everything is of course block based so it's pretty easy to align it and we're missing just a bit. Never mind. And we'll get it. And then here's another thing. If you right click, you actually get this wheel of different shapes. I don't know how that's, uh, I, that's pretty cool. I don't know how many other things have the same thing, but it's uh, pretty cool that that exists. So we built this and we have a vantage point over our two dimensional base, but we're gonna get a more three dimensional base and that's gonna be what we, the next start. So we want to take a look at our control panel here and we can now add a station that goes further down. If we know we get to level 90, well, that's maybe call it something else, mine and then call it at 90. And if we just click it and it starts working on it immediately. We can hear the rattling as it starts digging down. And then we can just use the opportunity just to get this. You can't have anything below, then it won't be able to to dig down through for all of this. Um, that's kind of, kind of obvious. They can't dig through the building materials. So we can then put in the building materials around it after afterwards again. Nope, that's uh, tried that. And here we go. Then from here on, we just simply just uh, wait until we have dug our way all the way down. And we're gonna be putting some little lights. It's really nice that these lights are available and just helps a bit, especially when working underground. So we're just gonna wait for the construction to complete. It takes a bit of time for it to dig down 40 levels. And here it is. Now let's go to our new mining location. And as we ride down, this now gives us a completely new view and look of uh, of the world and that anything below here now is a stone layer and a lime layer and then we come into our ignium layer and we can actually just go down here and it's fully terraformable the entire thing which is super cool and i mean it's not really super unique or anything but i mean when playing factorio and satisfactory uh, mainly then uh, it is pretty unique to have something that is terraformable uh, and the fact that since it is a voxel base, that's something you really should be doing. What we're going to do is we've researched some explosives and uh, we are going to be testing those out because that's a pretty uh, easy way. We can start digging or we can just blow the whole thing up. And uh, if given those two options, well, blowing things up is obviously the right choice. So we'll switch over to the explosives and just chop it. Eh, okay, maybe not ideal. And we're making the, the detonator. As we have the detonator, we will be trying that and uh, switching over to the detonator and just... I like the look of the explosive. That is very much a Valorant type uh, look and feel. This cartoony feel of uh, of the smoke and blasts. I'm saying Valorant, but that's the, that's where I what, what it reminds me of. Uh, if we look at... Okay, let's just move up back here. Then look at the other explosion. And switch over to the detonator. And boom, yeah, it has a very cartoony look, but it looks super cool. I like it, I like it, it fits. And then we can, uh, we have some more space. Now, when we blow things up, we just destroy materials. So be mindful, not that there's any limited amount of resources, but there's still, uh, we are gonna have to dig out a lot manually anyway, uh, because we're gonna need to get a lot of these materials. We're also gonna need more power. And because the elevator also functions as transferring power in on the high, voltage network. So if we recall, then there's a high voltage network, which is basically where you put all your power plants. And now we also put it into, put our elevator and then we can draw out power from the different levels. So we don't need to have different power lines. 
at the different levels. We can simply just drag it into. Let's get that over here. And there. So we now have uh, more power and we have the power now hooked up. And then we can go back down, uh, down below and then build, uh, get that power onto the building platforms because the building blocks conduct power anywhere. So we just need to transform it out and then we can uh, build power at that location. And we're here. So let's make a transformer. And we can then hook it up. It's not super good because it actually goes through the elevator. But here we can see that now it functions as a different section of the power network. I love the power utility. So at this point, we need to start digging so we can get uh, more of these materials for our to get started with the Ignium processing. We've got a bit more space here. And uh, we are now ready to, uh, to start building some more things, like the very first things. Uh, we are going to use an induction smelter. Induction smelter is, um, it's using all the stuff that we have, but the induction smelter is able to process the Ignium. So we also, and on top of the Ignium for the induction, we can make the induction smelter, but the, the it also needs some Xenoferrite. So unfortunately, in order to make the steel plates, we need both the Ignium and we need some Xenoferrite. So we've gone up here and picked up a lot of that. And then we just uh, head on down. So this is what we need four xenoferrite ore and two ignium in order to make two beams uh two ingots and then one ingot equal one beam so it's basically a one to one we have a bit of space down here it's not much but it's just enough to get us going because uh, the stuff we want to make down here actually requires more ignium but we'll start uh, by just making a box it doesn't need to do much and we just need to get our stuff inbound so we should have enough for all the stuff we we want we can then take our Induction smelter. Yep. And this is pretty tall. I think it's like five times tall. So you need to make sure that there's room for it. And we'll just get some stuff inbound. Get some of the random stuff here. And then get it started. Push it in. And then we just need to wait a bit of time for this. In the meantime, while it's working, it's a good time to blow some stuff up so we get more space because we're going to make a nice underground base here. So let's just throw it and get some more. It's really nice working working like this. It's, it works quite well. And just be mindful that it does have a tendency to blow up your uh, foundations. Did it blow up? No, it didn't blow up any foundations here, but it uh, it will if it if it's if it can get away with it. So more explosives, more explosives. It's so enjoyable. And it's, I think it's the best way to get more space. And once we get that space, we can then take and put some foundations on it or some building blocks so that we can uh, use those building blocks to expand our base, our underground base here. We want to build everything down here. And the funny thing is like you, you build, explode a big area and it just feels like you have a massive base and yet it doesn't. So now that we have just a bit more space, we can now take out from our induction smelter and get the first little bit of automation, getting that into two different locations. We get the induction smelter that is producing the steel ingots and then the steel ingots can now flow into the next part. That will be into the steel beams. I keep pressing escape to get out of that, but it is not an overlay. There we go. And we'll put in whatever we have picked up already. So that should uh, get going and then we need to collect a lot of materials for the next part because the next part is we want to make some automated mining down here. Now, how would we want to do automated mining at a location such as this? Well, let's uh, let this pass for a bit. And now we have some more uh, resources. What we're going to do is we are going to make a rail mining depot. We're going to make an Ignium rail miner and we're going to make some extra tracks. It's a... Uh, Basically, I would uh, recommend building the tracks first. You need to place two tracks first uh, before you even uh, build, uh, build the miner. This is basically a mining drill that automatically mines into, uh, into the area and it just continues forever and ever and ever and uh, sends it back. It's a super, super cool idea and I was, I was just blown away when I, I built it and figured it out. So you need two of these. This is uh, the space that needs to be deployed, the miner, and then you match the reds to the reds. And that is the actual mining location. 
So now that we have that, unfortunately it's not powered, so uh, we do need to to hook it up to some power just to get us started. But it looks good and then it will continue to lay tracks automatically as it moves in there. Let's get some power and drag it here towards the back and over into the inside here. Uh, it's blocked. It's actually blocked. I think, yeah, it's just blocked by itself. There's some some part of the elevator is blocking the the access to it. As you can see, we need to be at five, uh, height five here. So that means either just dig it out in, uh, digging out is, is just, it's cumbersome. There you go. We got it hooked up. So now it's hooked up, not to the main line of the, of the foundation it's standing on, but actually to the high voltage line. Let's go into the inventory and then we can deploy the tracks. That means these are just extra tracks for the miner to use. That dictates how far it's going to go. And then we have deployed the miner. So with the miner is determining what resource we're actually going to mine. And now it's deployed and it will just start mining its way in here. Just drilling into this uh, this location. It won't be getting the Ignium like we do when we do mining. It'll get some Ignium rubble. Uh, and we just wait here. There's some little rail cart coming back. This is only four, but I think they carry 16 uh, generally. Next one comes in. How much is that? Oh, I just picked up the inventory. Never mind. Yeah, no, four each. Each cart is only transferring four. That's not a lot. But we also have the issue that this is Ignium rubble. So we need a crusher to deal with the Ignium rubble. And that means just need more steel. So we need to get some kind of uh, manual go things going before we can actually get the automated going. We're going to get the crusher here. Two crushers and uh, look at the ratios. This one just continues to mine. And as we have the crushers ready, then we'll be trying to make some kind of basic automation where we get stuff out of the rail mining depot and into the crushers. Uh, we're going to be having two outputs later on. So we need to just find a good space for uh, for this to be built. And this will be making Ignium ore from Ignium rubble. And it takes 100 in and 40 out. And so it's worth noting that it's only 100 out is actually, mm, it's 160 is a normal belt. And uh, so that's, it's two of these is easy to get. Well, it's actually more than one belt, but yeah, well, it's, it's fine. Um, I, I don't think this is not really something that's going to be super constrained and build super much to ratio, but we get 40 times two out. So that is uh, 80 outbound. So we bring this and this out here and we just need to make it just a little bit closer. Build the crusher and we'll build, we'll try because it's underground. You don't have an unlimited amount of space. Well, you te technically do have it, but you just need to mine it out first. So we get those two inbound and uh, as we switch it on, we can see that it starts working immediately. But we're also going to get some outbound of this uh, anyway. So that's uh, something we still need to figure out how we're going to do the outbound there. So unfortunately, we have to move it just a bit in order to get uh, get more space. And you can see we've also upgraded to a yellow belt because uh, so we can actually have it running at full speed. We get the long handed inserter to be our outbound. Uh, this doesn't need to be a Mark II belt. It could just be a Mark I belt because the output is only 80 uh, each of these. And go back. Now we will have some Ignium coming out as we switch these to output. And what are we going to do with the Ignium though? Because now the Ignium is ready. Now uh, we can also just explode some more space. We need more space because we need to build a bigger production line. It's very enjoyable just blowing these up, these up and you'll, you'll figure out how to do it in a reasonable way. You could also just dig further down and then, yeah, I don't know. There's probably like a, a clever way to do these kind of things that I haven't really figured out. Uh, right now, I'm just throwing explosives at pretty much anything. And even though I feel like I have monstrous amount of space, then as soon as I start plopping down these big machines, then it's the same as uh, satisfactory. You just don't have a lot of space because they, the machines take so much more space. All right, I think this is a uh, pretty decent in terms of uh, spacing. We don't take damage from our build here, like our, uh, these parts. So what we want to do now is we want to make the induction. We take the other induction machine out and we now need to make the new induction machine. 
So here is, uh, if you've been sort of following along, you might think, hmm, there's a problem. How are we going to get the xenoferrite down here? Because the induction process here requires not only the, the ignium that we are getting in right now, but it also needs to get something else. It also needs to get the xenoferrite. And the xenoferrite is nowhere near this location. So we could go further down or we could get it. So we can even the... Uh, we're missing the xenoferrite and that's our main problem. How are we going to get the xenoferrite? Well, that's luckily going to be the next little challenge for us. Uh, this is working. So we're now going to figure out if we get a new belt. That will just come from here and go in. We can just pretend that it, we already have this belt. And build it intake and another intake. And we can then just uh, sort of forget about it just for a bit. It's not working, unfortunately. And then we'll need to go into the next part, which is making the beams. I'll just make one machine for each of the beams. And it needs to be make four apart. That's the closest we can make it. Oh, uh, to also make sure that I can actually access the panels. Yeah, and yeah. And that will make the xenoferrite no, yeah, that was called XF steel beam. Yes, indeed. It actually is better to move them a bit closer to each other because then I can get both of these two to go into another box more easily. Here. Let's just scoot it over. I wish there was a, a direct inserter that went from one machine to another machine because having like this, an outserter and an inserter and two belt segments. It just seems like a lot for just transferring from one machine to another machine because you can't really transfer between machines. Or maybe I'm missing something. And if I am, then that's because I haven't played very much in this game. But that's something I definitely would like to see, like a machine to machine inserter. But then again, that's like one more item. So these are now being ready. Here we also need to do the transfer and here we need to do the transfer and then also set the outbound outbound and nothing works because we still don't have the xenoferrite so we are now need to find out a way to get the xenoferrite down here of course also set the recipe not that it really matters until we get the xenoferrite so how could we do the xenoferrite well remember when we researched something we researched not only a an elevator but we also researched a Freight elevator. So let's have a look at how this one works. We are constructing two of those because they come in pairs. The way it works is that you take your ele freight elevator. It can be either an up or a down. And that means it's basically connecting. You can see it's either the top or the bottom. And then we set the bottom here because we want to connect it upwards. So this is unlike the normal elevator where you can just set different layers. This one is a direct connection between two, do two locations. Also, it doesn't take itself out. So it just basically highlights upwards. This is where it's going. So we need to go all the way up to our viewpoint. Let's go all the way up to the viewpoint. It's going to make it easier to see. As we come up, we can now see that it indicates for us what it's going to look like or where exactly it's going to be. So we just need to make here because it's important that we get it at level 136 so it's aligned with the rest of the base then we can take the other part of the freight elevator and then the, make it the top and as we do that well they're not really connected because um they um they have to they have to build themselves or uh, they, they need a clear space they don't dig dig through this themselves like the normal elevator does so there's only one way to do that explosives if in doubt, the answer is explosives. And yeah, let's throw some more. And just blow, us up, blow everything up. And we're down here. So let's get some more explosives. Uh, it seems like a good opportunity for us to get some more explosives. And uh, throw ourselves all the way down to to the lower part. We just Luckily, we don't take any damage, which is nice. So just dig our way down. We can see uh, we are now at height 122, 118. Looks like we're getting four levels down every time. You can probably also dig your way through it. So now we get to a stone layer. 110. 16. Look at that. It's just going up. 
And now we get to the limestone layer, which is going to be used for concrete, which I'm sure is going to be the next tier. And there we go. We got all the way down. And as soon as it goes down and they have a clear view, it connects itself all the way up. Super nice. So that will be enabling us to get our xenoferrite down from uh, up top. So we'll get it down here. So that will get it down here if we actually feed it in from the top. That should be the next thing. But you know, after we're done with this, we'd also like to get our scene, our XF steel beams upwards. We're gonna start with the lower one and getting yes, this placed down here somewhere, preferably aligned to the other location. We'll just need to move it just a little bit. And I want them to be aligned for absolutely no reason. Take the connection. And of course, there is no connection because it doesn't work yet. But we are going to be praying it. And we need to go up again. And uh, as we go up, we need to explode our way all the way down there as well. Let's call our elevator and get all the way up. So this is now aligned, luckily, in a very fortunate position. It's close to the bus, but it's not uh, sort of aligning completely to the bus here. And we will be just making the other one look just a little bit nicer by just surrounding it with building blocks so it's easy to get in here. There we go. Now it looks much nicer. What we're going to do is we have a... I've already prepared a line of more xenoferrite. This is taking from a place very far away. But I uh, wanted to make sure that we had a clean line for this inbound. So, you know, there's some things we need to do before <laughs> it behind the scenes to get the whole thing up and running. This damn tree. There. So we now have a full line of xenoferrite ore coming in. As we get this all the way in, it gets sucked into the location. Uh, we are also going to build the other one. Actually, we'll just explode our way down. I got a bit overzealous. Maybe we could have built the top one because that is actually blast resistant. Oops, as you can see, there's a bit of rubble here and there. <clears throat> that happens. Uh, if you blow things up, then uh, it turns into rubble and uh, it's destroyed and you have to mine that out. It's quite embarrassing. So luckily, that won't happen very often. Get down to the limestone layer and then we should be coming through. One more explosive. There, fall down. And as we step out, it is not going to be crafted because it's missing It's missing the, the top build. Uh, what we can see is over here. This should be coming down. Why is it not coming down? If we look at it, well, it's set to output, so that's good. And nothing is coming out. But if we look at the elevator, we can actually see that the time it took us to blow, away, blow up everything here, it's now coming in in nice little chunks moving down the ladder. That's such a cool idea this way. And it's now coming, coming out. Here we go. We have a nice steady supply. We have a full belt inbound and now also a full belt outbound. That should get us started on our various production. This is working. We're getting the XF steel ingots. And over here we have the steel beams. And the steel beams are gonna be processed and going out. Steel beams not going in here because they are going on the belt and they'll be now going in to this location which will be uh, now going all the way up and sorting that one out. And as you can see someone left a bit of uh, rubble at, around here. <clears throat> kind of embarrassing. And that one and then we can now build our... No. Let's build our elevator. And we need to build it as the top part of the elevator. And then it snaps nicely to the location it wants. You can see there are six tiles that are blocked below by building blocks. These ones we need to move out by, by ourselves. And we can see that when that's three, when we take the sixth one out, then immediately it'll connect. There, connected. Sweet. And we can also just uh, wrap this one up here. And just get a nice, decent move spread here now we are already getting stuff inbound for this location um well that's let's get this out of the way 
And then we take our material out and we are going to simply make it into a new boss line that we can use for whatever we want later on. And we'll make it slope up. And we now have steel on the bus as if it was uh, just naturally being miraculously built here. I think that is absolutely amazing. So we have the elevator that we can go up and down. We have the freight elevator that can bring things down. We have the freight elevator that can bring things up. We have the automatic rail miner that completely changes the way that it plays out. So even though we'd have now like this, then we can sort of have uh, have other bases down below and uh, at various locations, various levels. So we just need to sort of match it up and down and using the freight elevators do that. But what is a problem is the fact that we are going to be using a lot of power for this. So what we need to do in uh, terms of this is also get some new power because you can actually use the Ignium for a power source, a new type of power source. And because we're so focused on building everything here down at the lower levels, you can see here that uh, the batteries are draining and it's already nighttime. So um, this is going to turn into uh, bad stuff. So we're going to start by getting some more power. And um, first we need to get some more speed in order to get some, make some room for it. Wow, swing and a miss. Oh well, Let's, nothing bad could happen by just blowing up. Well, we'll uh, fix that in post. And as we were saying, we are building, uh, we've now run out of power. It's the middle of the night. So we are actually quite desperate. Solar panels, funnily enough, don't work at night. So we'll need to build uh, build something new. We need to get the things kickstarted uh, and we're gonna need to get the kickstarted with, with the Ignium power plant. The Ignium power plant it can't burn the rubble. So it's gonna have to burn the next part. That's, uh, uh, that's first it needs to be crushed, taking the rubble and crushing that. Of course, there's no power, so we can't even set the recipe. That's kind of, eh, I'd like to be able to set the recipe even if I don't have the power for it. But I guess that's, uh, that's a choice. So we need to connect it. We'll just do all of these things and pretend that it actually works. And we're going to be making this into two power plants. It can easily support two power plants, so not really a big deal. We just need to make sure that the lines, the belts don't uh, mix and match. So we'll bring it to this side instead. There, so that's coming in. And then we'll be going out on a belt that's parallel to the other belt uh, with Ignium. But we want this one to have its own Ignium belt. This is toggle output into a belt. And then we should have room for making two of the new uh, generators right here. Now, I don't think generally it would be a good idea to put the uh, combustion in uh, generators underground there's not really a lot of uh, ventilation down here but you know it it works and this is close to our ignium we could also drag, drag the ignium up and then or we could drag it to a completely different level just wherever we wanted to have it that's the beauty of it you can uh, do that so it is not uh, no grid connection so what we need to do is connect this up to the high power high voltage grid like the Rail miner is also connected to the high voltage grid. So some of these things down here are just getting connection, are getting power from uh, from the foundations, but other things are getting it from uh, from the high voltage net. And this is, since it's a power plant, then it goes on the high voltage net. Now it's kind of making sense for me. So this one is now active, even though it doesn't have anything. And of course you can see we now have it up in combustion engine. They're generating potentially seven and a half kilowatt each. We can just put in uh, just a bit of the Ignium ore. We don't have a lot of it, but it's just a tiny bit. And over on the other thing, we just happen to have just a few of the uh, biomass that's burning through really, really quickly, but it's, uh, it's working. Now that gets the rest of the base kickstarted. That means everything else starts working. That means our real miner gets back into gear. We can see that everything starts working again. All we need to do now is get the Ignium working. Then we can start processing the Ignium ore or the Ignium rubble into Ignium ore. The Ignium ore will now go automatically into the into the power generators and we will then be super happy about that. And as we go over to this side, just having a look at what it looks like. Uh, we can't run through it. That's kind of, um, kind of a shame. But that's because it's a building. And look at this. So we have quite a bit of this. Uh, we've also seen that I put three of those rails in. You can see it has dug into the wall and it'll just continue to just dig in there 
just nice and casually and just keep sending these little rail cards back. It's such a cool idea. Now, as far as I can tell, this can't turn. So we just set it up to drill in a particular direction. It's not meant to sort of be uh, generating space as in automatically excavating some space, but it's meant to just generate some, uh, uh, be an automatic way of mining underground. You can set these up at various locations. What we're going to do is we're going to go all the way up to our viewpoint using our beautiful elevator. Now I'm super enjoying uh, this part. I think it was a nice step forward and I think it was something that was important for us to show in this uh, episode. That all the things that are new and now building underground bases and really make, taking the third dimension into effect. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you thought this was a, a nice second showcase for this video. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye on it as the game develops and, and comes closer to early access. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, you know where the like button is. And of course, consider subscribing if you want to keep up with more content here on the channel. Until next time, take care. And as always, stay effective.